is grower produced champagne, commonly known as grower champagne? What makes it different from other champagne you'll find? In this episode, Allison and I explore grower produced champagne and suggest two examples to try that we love. Enjoy the video, give it a like, let us know your comments and subscribe to our channel for more. Grower produced champagnes, commonly known as grower champagne, are what they sound like, the champagnes that are made by the estate that actually grows the grapes. Grower champagnes make up just a small segment of all champagnes produced. The majority of champagne is still made by large negociant houses, especially such houses like Moet et Chandon and Veuve Clicquot. Grower champagnes tend to be more terroir focused, sourced from a single vineyard or closely located vineyards around a village and made with grapes, which vary with each vintage. Today, there are over 19,000 independent growers in the Champagne region, accounting for nearly 88% of vineyard land in the region. Around 5,000 of these growers produce wine from their own grapes. Of the Champagne imported into the US in 2014, only 5% was grower Champagne. Making champagne is complex. You not only have to own a lot of equipment to make champagne, but you must have access to huge storage facilities for long aging of the wines. Large champagne negotiants have those. Few grape farmers possess the space or financial capacity to store their champagnes and even fewer growers make enough champagne to ship around the world to the major markets. It's easier for them to sell their champagne in France. But once you taste grower produced champagne, you'll understand how each often expresses their own terroir, often from a single vineyard or from a small patch of land, much more than negociant champagnes do because they're made from a blend of many vineyards and areas, often 50 or more wines blended into the typical non-vintage negociant champagne. But grower champagne gives you that single vineyard experience. And the wines are often drier than negociant champagnes as well, since they send, tend to use lower dosage, if any at all. The palate tends to be clean and fresh and pure, since the wine is not a blend of grapes from different vineyards. And it really reflects the terroir on which the grapes were cultivated. So how can you tell that you're drinking a grower-produced champagne? Ha ha! by the initials on the bottom of the label. The initials RM, Recoltant Mendibulant, on the label indicates that this is one of the thousands of growers who make their own champagnes under their own labels and sell it themselves. However, there are also initials RC, Recoltant Co Coopateur, which indicates that this is one of the 3,000 growers who sell champagne under their own labels, but through a cooperative where it is made for them. The far more common initials NM, Negociant Mendifilon, indicate that this is a champagne from a Negociant house, most of whom buy a majority of their grapes from growers. So Allison, what grower champagne are you sipping? Well, I have the Roger Coulon, mm. Champagne Roger Coulon. This is a family business dating back to 1806 and today is run by the eighth generation, Eric and Isabel Coulon. They have 10 hectares under vines, primarily located in the premier crew rated villages of Virny, Colomum, and Parnier. Parny, excuse my pronunciation. Um, <laughs> the average age of the vines is 38 years old and they grow 48% Pinot Munet, 30% Pinot Noir, and 30% Chardonnay. So Roger Coulon is considered a natural wine producer because they only use indigenous yeast and they harvest everything manually. So they use no herbicides and no machinery. And I have their Roger Coulon Cuvée Prestige Heritage. This is a hundred dollar bottle of wine. It's a blend of 20% Pinot Noir and 80% Chardonnay from a single crew, a Ludite, um, a little section of a specific vineyard. Um, the Chardonnay is aged for one year in small barrels and undergoes malolactic fermentation and then spends eight years on the lees and has a minimal dosage, as we were talking about at the beginning, very little. So I get honey notes, mm -hmm. vanilla bean, a little smoke. I get some of those citrus things, but it's really about this kind of rich, beautiful Oh, but it is so precise. It is all about minerality. It is just 
I mean, it is a wine like it's champagne. It's just, it's a precise, beautiful, beautiful wine. Wow, that's a quite a Well, I love that both of us are drinking champagne right now. Yes. I, so what about I, you, Cindy? <laughs> I have the champagne Bruno Payard Blanc de Blanc Grand Cru. It's $80. Um, it was, I, it's one of my go-tos. It was founded in 18, uh, 1981, uh, Brunard Champagne House. And it's worked with, they've worked with families who have cultivated grapes in the region for many, many years. Uh, so now Bruno uh, Payard has 79 acres of vineyards, including 15 Cru, 35 acres of the total of, come from Grand and Premier Cru vineyards. And all are located in different areas, boasting, I mean, unique terroir and microclimates. And that's what makes every parcel so special. So Bruno Payard, kind of a fun fact, was the first to um, print disgorgement dates on the champagne labels. So according to Bruno Payard, in the life, and I'm doing a quote here, in the life of champagne, the disgorgement is the key moment from that day. A process of aging begins that's unique to champagne. And I think he might be right. And that's why he feels it's important to put that disgorgement on the label. And he's a, a huge champion of the champagne region, passion. Um, and now other houses put the disgorgement date on their labels too. So what's in this glass? The Blanc de Blanc Grand Cru is 100% Chardonnay, um, produced exclusively from the first pressing of the first grapes. Oh my gosh, selected from their 36 Grand Cru parcels in, in, in the region. The beautiful wine, oh my gosh, look at this. Pale color, citrus notes, chalky minerality. It was disgorged in August of 2019, aged for a minimum of 48 months, and then returned to the sellers for um, several months past disgorgement for recovery. But I just love the yeasty notes, the, the happy, the bubbles. I mean, they just won't stop. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's, it's just a wonderful, wonderful wine to celebrate all things. Really. Absolutely. I think that, that doing, you know, the special thing about grower champagne is just that uniqueness, that it, it really is a special yeah. wine that the next time you open up the wine, it's not going to be vastly different, but it's going to be unique to that vintage or that year or what you're drinking. It's not, um, I mean, I really respect the idea of consistency but what i love about grower champagne is the lack of consistency you know yeah. it's like wine you know it's an expression of time yeah. and use. <laughs> but it's always a happy surprise it's Absolutely. always like ah oh, this is such a beautiful wine so highly recommend finding grower produced champagnes so um, for those of you who are watching i hope you, we hope you've enjoyed this episode and we've explained that concept of grower produced champagne and hopefully you'll be able to find these two bottles. I think you will. So give your video a like, comment about what you found. And if you have other suggestions, let everyone know. And subscribe to our channel for more. Cheers. Cheers.